Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 459 at scavengerlife.com. Yeah, so this past week uh, we got a text message from our friends and future partners over at Broad Porch Coffee, and (laughs) Phil was like, "Uh, guys, we're getting all these um, uh, orders from all over the country. Like, what is going on? And then he immediately texted right back, and I guess... Somebody actually said that they from were coming Scavenger from Scavenger Life. Life. So he's, they were very, very surprised. Thank you to everyone who yeah. ordered coffee. I hope you're enjoying yeah. it right now because yep. he ships so fast. Yep. Southern Split is uh, a good blend. Is one of the good blends because it's a mix of three different South American yes. coffees. That's yes. right. The Southern it, Split. And then the other, Ethiopian is my favorite because it's a lighter roast if you're into light roast coffee. Yeah. So you can go to broadporch.coffee if you're interested in buying some uh, either beans or ground from some people who will be partners with soon. Yes. And just to like, I guess now that we're kind of, we l- l- let the cat out of the bag. So that building we bought on Main Street, we're renovating it right now to start a coffee, uh, a cafe. Yeah. But we also bought a little building <laughs> like about a block mm. away in like kind of the industrial part of our town right and we're renovating it to start a roaster so phil he uh, roasts coffee right now in like a little small a uh, roaster but we actually bought a larger one that does like 30 pounds at a time yeah that this, it's uh, a serious yeah. thing that's happening so uh it kind of it kind of started getting bigger and bigger the idea but it's good we're super excited and, yeah uh, uh, you know, it's, it's been funny not talking about it on the podcast because yeah, we were, you know, we were doing the cafe renovation and then we were like, we kind of need a place for this roaster. Uh, we don't want to rent a place, so let's make our own place. So that was like, that's its whole own huge project. Well, I think for like. anybody, you know, all of us were like scavengers and we sell at home and like you own your, you know, you have your house and you store everything in your house, you know, and, uh, right. it's like kind of bare bones kind of business, but anyone who runs, I guess, a brick and mortar business, it's such a different world. Yeah. And I'm sure there's some people out here that have done that or do that now. And for us, it just doesn't make sense to like rent buildings from other people. To us, it makes sense as scavengers is to purchase buildings so, yeah, I'd say this coffee business goes out of business. You know, it happens. Yeah. I mean, we're starting like a, kind of a front facing public, like everyone get together and hang out kind of business in the middle of a pandemic. So <laughs> it's a little bit kooky. So if yeah. it does fail, it's fine because all the money we're putting in these buildings, renovating new electric, new plumbing, it's still ours. Right. You know, it won't fail. But, you know, the the thought of paying rent to someone and then after five years not owning anything and walking away seems crazy. So yeah, it's yeah. I don't that is my hat goes off to any entrepreneur out there that is willing to risk renting a building and installing equipment in it and you know right. fixing it up and changing things and customizing it just the way you want and then if it doesn't work you lose. All of that money, yeah. you know, it just seems a crazy. lot of that money. So, but anyway, we're excited. That's what I've been working on every week now is just me and my buddy go in there and we're like, little redoing, by little, yeah, redoing the electric and putting in new windows and you know, yeah. uh, doing it. So, it is, it is still happening, yeah. Uh, so I was thinking this week about so eBay, yeah, that's that's what we're talking about. Someone was talking about on the forum about like, you know, what they should, I I forgot exactly how they framed it, but it's basically like, what should I buy to sell? It's just like the most common thing, you know, and I'm sure we're attracting some of these people because, you know, people are losing their jobs. They've always wanted to to do this. Now's the time. And I, and we, we, we talk about it, that we are not our target audience, Right. Right. And we, I mean, we always, me and you are always doing this. Like, our taste is not our buyer's taste. Sometimes it is. Sometimes. Not all the time. So when we're scavenging, I'm definitely buying things that it's exciting to me. 
you know. Yeah. I mean, we have to have that kind of excitement. But also, when I see something, I'm like, that's not my taste. But I'm looking for quality. Yeah. I'm looking for, is it a, uh, a unique item and, or is it rare? I mean, yeah. those are the things I'm just trying to find. Kind of like with the, the pottery and ceramics right. and I china. Do, I mean, it's just that exact thing. I don't like a lot of that stuff, but when you pick something up, you can feel, oh, this is, you know, junky from the 70s versus this is you know, beautiful porcelain from Japan from the early 1920s. Like, you know, you start to see those differences and you're like, I think somebody might want, actually, I think somebody might want both of these, but, um, you know, you can tell the difference between the quality and, you know, I don't want this particular thing in my house. Um, I wouldn't use it, but I know that there is someone out there that probably would. And I think, especially like with the pottery and stuff, did you seem especially good at that, like being able to go when there's like a you know that wall yeah. at the thrift store yeah. of plates and stuff? There are times where you go and be like, "This is from the 1800s," and I'm like, "How do you know that?" Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, you just start to see those things because you saw it once, you sold it, and then you'll you can point it out again. You yeah. know. But, Sometimes I see that stuff and it's fake. Right. You're like, "This is from the 1800s." Flip it over, not right. you know. Um, that's rare, but yeah, I don't know. That's just for every item you purchase to sell. It's like the same. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, it, so that was one passing thought. And then yeah. the other is this, we got an email from some, a lady, which we get emails every week from people that hear our podcast. Yeah. Right? And she was thanking us for like having this life of delayed gratification, you know, like right. we, kind of we talk about that all the time like we're like yes we're like not people that like buy new cars and like we're always like going to hawaii and like, you know, <laughs> we're ever going we're there. really about like delayed gratification yeah, like sure. we're kind of like hunkering down being thrifty investing in our business you know i guess my question is in brought it up like we are like that yes my question to you is yes how long do we delay yeah that's gratification? a great it's a very good question. Like we I would really, love to have an answer to that. We haven't really talked about this. So it's, you know, it's 2020. I'm 46. Mm-hmm. I'm 40. We're about to both turn another year. So yeah. I'll be 47 in, in June. June. We're bo- yeah. Both our birthdays are in June. We're both Geminis. 47. Oh, my God. Holy <laughs> <laughs> oh, So, you know, 50 is my next. Oh, go. my God. <laughs> I can't Your eyes are like, you're like looking at me in a different way. Yeah, babe. Like, <laughs> so my question is, is like, yeah, yeah, how long do we delay? And gratification for us is like, we it's kind like, of, what is it? We kind of talked about it on the podcast. Like, it was for, it was just like, we talked about buying like a Tesla. Like, yeah, like I would love to buy a Tesla for sure. Because, but, but 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 the question is when because the you know as we just said one minute ago we're like and then we bought this other building that we're got renovating from the floor <laughs> up right you know it's yeah look we ask ourselves that we were asking ourselves that before the pandemic we were like what is the path and what is the end game well like Oh, what's the point of all this? So, I mean, you know, like, yes. why are we delaying gratification? I mean, right, well, right. first of all, yeah. I want to be clear. Yeah. It's not like it's it's a really clear choice. I mean, it's not like we have so much money that we could just start buying a bunch of stuff. It's like if we start buying a bunch of stuff, it would be a problem because yeah. then our, our, you know, our cushion of life would get smaller and smaller and smaller. Right, so sure. when exactly. this pandemic happens, it's like... We have one month of savings right, instead right, of like right. now we have like a year, you know. Right. So I guess for me, I just it's want to know what is gratification to you? So let's say we could do anything like like how would your life, what would it be like? What would we see if you weren't delaying gratification? Huh. It's a, I, <laughs> I mean, I actually don't really, I mean, I have, I feel like I have lots of answers to that, Okay, but 
throw out some things. Uh, yeah, like not working as much. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, obviously when you own businesses, that means someone else has to do the work. So mm-hmm. you need to hire people. But, you know, we kind of do that now. Like we hire people to clean the houses. Right. Um, so we don't clean but, the houses. I mean, is it just like not having a business? Like just not having eBay? Like not having to worry about... I don't know. Um, I feel like when the pandemic started a couple weeks ago, I sort of was like, why do we have all this? Like, we could just live on eBay. Like, we could pay all... If we didn't have the other mortgages and houses and whatever... Right, properties. Properties or... And also not doing renovations. I mean, right. I could pay all my bills plus have savings sure. just on eBay. So, Yeah. Why do anything else? Yeah. Why not just like chill out, walk in the neighborhood in the evening? Like I don't know. I would just be bored. <laughs> Clearly, I would just be bored because we're n- we're yeah. not just doing that. And for the last fifteen years, we haven't done that. Right. But it's a really interesting question to ask. Like you said, you're going to be fifty soonish. And actually, <laughs> this morning <laughs> I, I said something where I was like. Oh, what's going to happen 10 years from now in in 2030? And I'm like, 2030? That sounds so far away. It's like but it's science not. Fiction, right? But it's not, you Nine know? Years. And so so in 10 years I'll be 50. Yeah. And I'm like, you'll be 50. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and and so so when that happens, I'm like, am I still like just cleaning laundry every day for our rentals, and like packing things for you, right? And I mean, you know, but, but the thing is, why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, right. like, haven't the question is, haven't we built a nice life for ourselves? And you're yeah. like, yeah, yeah. So what's wrong with that? Why, I mean, why, so, why want anything else? So if you know, I, I never ask a question without knowing the answer. My my own answer. Yeah. So my my own answer mm-hmm. is is like the act of doing these things should be the gratification. Like, it, it can be. Well, I mean, I think in my case, yeah. for uh, me personally, it is, you know? Yeah. Like, us living this life is the gratification. Right. You know? Like, I have fun going and working on buildings. I mm-hmm. have fun finding things to sell on eBay, yep. you know? I have yep. fun talking to people, you know, about stuff like this. And, right, it's the process. Like, right. like, Like, you know, real quick, it's not like we are, you know grinding it out at some corporate job hoping that when i'm 65 we can finally retire right and then we'll like buy the rv and like get yeah. around the country and like, like that's not... we'll go and have a house on a golf course and play right. golf, you know whatever fantasy people right. the common fantasy people have you know well yeah i don't really know a good answer yeah. uh, and and also so when you start buying property and owning property and renting property, whatever you do with that property. Usually the end game is, well, when we turn whatever age, we sell it and cash out. So is that our plan? I don't know. I guess so. I don't think so. Because I mean, well, do we just like hold on to it till we die? We could. I mean, we could. I I don't, you want to go on forever because I'm sure some people don't find this interesting, but yeah. I, I do, I do wonder just for us because we, yeah. we, we haven't really talked about this that much is that what, what I was trying to get at is that let's say we had a million dollars cash, right? How would that change your life right now? Other than, you know, like yeah. would, would we be buying things we don't have now? Would we be taking yeah, probably trips? Not. Probably not. Would we, no. yeah, you know, no, and, and, not, and not that's my question. And, yeah. and so I, I think for me, you know, having more of a cushion is always nice. Yeah. We don't have as big a cushion as I would like, you sure. know, uh, and it'd be great to have like all of our property paid but off. But it doesn't change you know? things. Like it doesn't change. But the gratification much. to me is being able to like when we bought that building four months ago. Yeah. And we didn't tell anyone here <laughs> about it, but we were. It was kind of like an impulse buy because I met the guy that had the building. And it was like, and he was willing can, to sell it. We can afford it. Yeah. You know? And so let's do this. You know. So that to me is the gratification is the excitement so yeah and working with phil and jill to start this coffee business is exciting to well and too. it's something yeah. that we 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 desperately want in our area right um and that's what keeps me going is like you know 
we've lived here for 12 years and we're like, we really want this thing to happen. Yeah. A lot of people want this thing to happen and we need to make it happen. Like right. no one else is going to do it Put for us. Mouth is, so. I mean, you have to, yeah. or just shut up and like sell on eBay and hang out in your neighborhood. And that's that yep. fine. That's yep. fine. You can do that too. Yep. So, okay. Okay. Cool. Moving on. Moving eBay. on. eBay. eBay. Specifically. So, we had talked about, you know, we have helpers that help us do things, mm-hmm. clean houses, and take pictures of eBay yep. and write descriptions. One of our main helpers, so we have two eBay helpers. One is kind of on hold right now because she had gotten a full-time job a while ago. Oh, yeah. And she kind of like comes and helps us when we're out of town. She's kind yeah. of like a... Uh, she's like a surrogate us. Yeah, you know, but she's not really helping us on a weekly basis. The other helper who's been like really tremendous, she's been working for us for about a year. Two years. Two years. She comes like three days a week, you know, like 12 hours a week. Yeah. Very flexible. It's yeah, what she totally. wants. She takes pictures. She actually just told us she got a full time job recently, <laughs> which is good for her. Yeah. Like both of these people, I'm like, great. I'm so glad you like got. And, and a you know, and job. that's, I'm sure anyone here who has people helping them, I mean, that is the issue. I mean, we can't offer what a real. Yeah job does which is like you know benefits and like a salary. salary and you know all that you know we what we offer is someone that wants a flexibility and that's yeah. what she has been uh, wanting for all this yeah. time because she like helps her mom who's sick and you know she um, helps family members and yeah so she so, so she needed that flexible schedule she's gonna work about another month or so and we're gonna try and get her to get as much so stuff much done, done but yeah we're gonna have to figure out if we try and find someone else who is a local who we can feel trust right and bring her in yeah or him uh, right or if we just go back to doing it ourselves i have pictures no idea and, yeah yeah i i feel like once the pandemic is slowed down and our businesses open up again i'm not gonna have time to take photos for yeah. ebay i don't know though i yeah. mean or or go back to where i'm taking pictures of, and of ebay that's and, true yeah. actually that that's not a bad idea of you doing like 10 things right here on the table right here on the kitchen table i'm real good at that a little bit every day i'm real good at yeah that. good so, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we have two buildings that need to get renovated, and you are in charge of that. So, yeah. that's kind of not... <laughs> we'll see. It's interesting to hear about Canadians. Yes. they. Uh, we have some Canadians who are on the forum and who are probably hearing this right now. Uh, you know, and a, most Canadians are, like, right on the border right. of the country. And so, a lot of Canadians also, because America is so huge... Basically, their eBay business depends on Americans. So yeah, they sell mostly. to Americans, and so they, so they actually drive across a border to bring all their packages to the American post office. It's cheaper. Yeah, and uh, and I guess because right now the border's closed, they can't oh, do that. Yeah. Um, I wonder. Like, it would be so interesting if like Canada and the U.S. Postal Service could like do deals. You know what I mean? Where you're like, if we want to send to Canada, it'll be it is actually pretty cheap. Um, or if Canadians want to send to us, it should also, like, you know, do a deal hmm. where Canadians can send us stuff for cheap. Hmm. But you I like, think that's the whole point, though. I think, look, we love the American Post Office. I love it. USPS. We love them. But, I mean, I think the reality is it is a, a subsidized program. And I think it should be. I yeah. Mean, and I think right. th- with the Canadian Post, I don't know, it's more expensive, but maybe they're charging what it actually costs. Are they they might be privatized. I don't private? know if it's privatized, oh. but maybe they just charge what it costs to ship. To I mean, something. we all know this. There are private postal Yeah, FedEx, carriers, UPS, DHL. And they're really expensive because yeah, I'm you, assuming that's what it costs to ship yeah. these items and have you know multiple people touch your package and carry it to different places yeah. and then get in the truck and pay for gas and you know and they have to make a profit and that's just what it costs. Well, right? and and so the difference too between the USPS and like UPS and FedEx. UPS and FedEx can refuse to deliver to certain addresses. Mm. The post office guarantees that they will deliver to every single address in the yeah. United States. So yeah, it's it's like it's a totally different system. But just going back to yeah. Canadians, yeah, yeah. I, I think some people I guess different 
points of entry have different uh, roles. Interesting. But, um, you know, I'm I'm assuming it's going to get better over time. But, I mean, in the meantime, I don't know. Like, why not just make people buy through Canada Post? It might be a bit more expensive. Maybe your sales go down some, but at least you're selling something. something. Someone was just saying that they were just going to close their store down completely. It seems right. like that's a bit extreme, but uh, maybe it's uh, something that I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. It It, it is hard, to, like we're all saying, to be like, should I just close this business that I run? <laughs> you know, mm. what a horrible um, decision to have to make, you know? Yeah. I mean, for us, thank God. I mean, I have not heard, other than some members of Congress wanting the post office to have a real problem uh i'm just glad the post office is still open because that's keeping our business alive you know i mean if our, the post op- well first of all if the post office closed it would suck for anyone who's trying to order food from amazon supplies from amazon or ebay you know because that's what i'm i mean i'm like oh we don't want to have to go to yeah. lowe's well i'm gonna order this right. handful of stuff for the renovation right. on on ebay or amazon yeah. and my postal carrier just puts it on my porch yeah. thank god yep so yeah there would be a real problem if the post office closed because of this okay let's talk about our numbers this yes. week Oh my gosh! So last week we, we, you know, we liked to make we like to gross without shipping costs a thousand bucks a week. Like that covers all of our mortgages and bills and all that yeah. stuff. Last week we didn't quite make it. Was like nine hundred and eighty three dollars close. This week we made twenty seven hundred dollars. We had some high dollar items sell. Absolutely. So the difference is like a week ago we sold 40 items. This week we sold 63 items. Wow. So that by itself we sold more I stuff. was shipping a lot. So yeah. so I'm obviously shipping myself. And every morning I'm like, dude, I got 12 things to pack. Yeah. Half of which are big and delicate. And then a week ago our average selling price was $23. Yeah, was because we, we, we talked about it like I... I went through like almost everything was under twenty dollars. This like, week, our average selling price was forty two dollars. Yes, let's helps. keep that average selling price. But please. like you said, um, we had some two high dollar things. So we sold a vintage rug, a wool rug, for four hundred and seventy five dollars. Yes, thank you. I will please say, don't return it. Yeah, right. I will say. That was kind of me. Yeah. Because I was like, we haven't sold a rug in a long time. And we looked at the prices. and we I were, had crazy prices. We were pricing wool rugs like we priced them way back Ten before years ago. they started getting <laughs> popular. I, I think I had $1,200 on this rug. Now, I think the, the problem also for me is I'm like, but I have to make an offer. Yeah, well, yeah. people are like, that's so high. I'm not going to offer 400 Like, I'm just not yeah. even going to be close. So um, I brought the price down to some four ninety nine or something, and she mm-hmm. offered four seventy five, and I was like, "Oh, I think she just bought it. It was on sale." Right. Uh, I brought the price down, and then it was on sale, so it was like four seventy five. Yeah. Um, we 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 we've talked about it. It's crazy. Those old vintage rugs, the wool rugs, got real popular, and yeah. I, and I can remember we. We kind of saw that trend because it made sense to us. Yeah, yeah. In the early days, and we were able to to buy these old vintage wool rugs and sell them for twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, a short a window. very small window. Then the market time. caught up where other eBay sellers were doing the same thing, and also now you can just go on Amazon and just buy a fake wool. Target vintage has rug. them. I mean, everyone now sells fake vintage faded rugs. You know? Yeah. So that. A market is dumped out. We also sold a piece of art for two hundred sixty-five dollars. And the interesting story on this was we had sold it for a hundred dollars a couple weeks before. Yep. The person returned it because they, they didn't just, like the color. And we only sold it for a hundred dollars. Right. We put it back up at two sixty-five. It sold the same day for well, that price, so it's nice. The funny thing is, I got the return. I refunded the lady, I unpacked it, I put it back on the shelf. I still had all the packing material in my office. I was about to, you know, reuse it for whatever. The piece of artwork resells again. I just go grab it and repack it in the same material and send it back out. Yeah. It sold for more than double. Yeah. It was like great. I'm so happy. We sold a sewing machine. It was 
yeah, my yeah. old sewing machine. Your old sewing machine for 85 bucks. And we That's probably broke good. even on it after we had bought it and had it I fixed spent, up. So it was a refurbished, like, 1970s model. Um, it was 90 bucks. I got it for 90 bucks, and um, I used it a bunch. And then my mom, who was very amazing, uh, bought me a brand new sewing machine for my birthday last year. Like a singer. Sing, it's awesome. Uh, I mean, it's great. So, um, so I right now, obviously, sewing machines are in high demand to make masks and to make yeah. whatever. And uh, yeah, I sold it, and yeah. it worked. I tested it. I even put the little like test strip thing there so they could see that it worked. So we we sold a good amount. I mean, again, not not like we're getting rich off of it, but a good amount of like uh, pieces of china and glass and pottery. Um, really fun. It's selling, and it's not a huge seller, but we get it so cheap. And to me, it's like it's going to be unlike rugs. I think the barrier to entry for other people that sell this stuff is yeah. that it's really a pain to store yep. and organize, and then you have to, to be willing to ship it. Ship it. So, you know, if anyone wants to get in on that a market, great. But man, it is it, it is a pain. This is why I never wanted to do it. Like anytime I would see <laughs> glassware, I'm like, oh, first of all, I don't want to ship it because I know it's going right. to break. But but once you know how to pack that stuff. I can do it in my sleep. Yeah. I'm just like, yep, this is how you pack I, I, this. I think the issue for us is we're just such scavengers. It's just so hard when I can't, we are... I can't not buy it. Places when you can buy boxes of it for just pennies on the dollar. But it has to be quality. I yeah. mean, there is a lot of garbage out there. Just like you yeah. said, I will go to a thrift store and I will look at the wall of glass in China and be like, okay, most of this I'm not interested in. Right. Uh, but this, 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 and this, I want yeah. that. You know, that's... A cool find. And then we also sold a bunch of t-shirts. Uh, we were on kind of a t-shirt kick about a year or two ago. Yeah, where like we were like ago. going to thrift stores and we were like, these t-shirts I'm just gonna get these are t-shirts. so cheap. And, you know, finding... Cool vintage, weird. It's just like anything. What's cool? What's weird? What, I don't know. You just yeah. have your gut instinct. You're like, this is kind of kitschy. But we got so many of them, we stopped buying them. But at least they're selling. They do sell. 15 bucks, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I've been... Yeah. I sell them sometimes. Yeah. Every week I sell. It's honest work, Ryan. I mean... <laughs> it ain't much. It ain't much, but it's honest but it's work. Honest selling work. old t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, customer issues. So we have, have a couple returns on like bigger, heavier items. Ugh. And... It's really, oh, it's really painful because we still have free returns on. So oh, it's like, it, it's. I uh, pay for that label. So I sold a um, kind of a nice, nicer uh, drip coffee maker. You know, look, the carafe is made out of glass. I had to bubble wrap it. I had to double, I double box the whole thing. Right. And this guy returns it and he's like, it's used. And you're like, yeah, it's totally used. I it said that used. on the thing. <laughs> and he used. shipped it back yeah. and I had to pay for the shipping. I'm yeah. like, oh, dude. And, and, and plus, like, you know, he took it out of your box that was like, Nicely packed and wrapped. Threw it, just threw and it back in the box. He just took it in and didn't even wrap so, it in. So he didn't. <laughs> he didn't bubble wrap the carafe or anything. It's right. glass. Luckily, it didn't. It didn't break. But I was like, dude, come on. Okay, so someone's asking, why do we do free returns? Like, why do it? Because, Here's why. Because because if something's wrong, if the carafe was broken, um, I can deduct that from the return. Right. I can say. This was received, the return was received damaged yeah. minus X amount of dollars. Seller protection is given to. Yeah, so you get seller returns. protection. So your buyer can be like, I dispute this. I want all my money back. I believe that eBay will give them their money back, but I don't have to pay it. Mm. It's covered under me right. doing free returns. So I still do free returns. Yeah. So it doesn't happen often enough to like really. Yeah. Us to take a financial hit. It just sucks. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> when you have to accept that return and see, this guy's returning this trench coat, it's in California. And the shipping back to me is like, I have to pay like $12. Yeah. and Just because he's like, ah, it doesn't really fit. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. well, I don't have to. I guess if he, if he doesn't say it's my fault, if he says it doesn't fit, which he did, 
um, I don't have to give him his original shipping back. Right. So that's a little yeah. bit helpful. Yeah. Uh, things we learned in the forum. Uh, we talked about some of it. Let me ask you a question. Yes. So someone came on and was like, I know these people that have an eBay store. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm-hmm. they're selling. It doesn't seem like they're selling the store. Because I don't think it, you can actually sell an eBay store. They're like, just selling all their They're selling like, of like items. all the inventory but also the guy wants to buy like the items that are already up to get like ink frog or some third party to move it over that makes like, sense move everything and i guess you were just asking everyone like is it worth it you know i'm not gonna say i don't know it's just like it's uh kind of just you know brand new wholesale items is it like is it like amazon open box stuff or? no it's oh. just like um it's sunglasses. It's basically oh, it's sunglasses. like no name sunglasses. Ooh. And it's just like generic, like if you look and it's just like yeah, a just... model that has, you know, it's not even like a real person. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's a real person, but it's like, you know, those like photos it, you just download off the internet. Yeah. It's someone that has a pair of sunglasses. Right, so right. It's just like not very personalized. It and, looks like you're like a drop shipper. Right. And so, oh, no. but the, the, okay. You know, he can see the store's sales. Right. You know, so the information. He can see they have a good feedback, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, he sees that, okay, you know, in 90 days, he said they sold 220 items, you know? So that's. Average price is like $15. So, I mean, if it's steady and, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I, I don't know. I mean, and for him, he says, like, the value of it is that it's. Photos are already taken, and there's already eBay. The work is done. Yeah. Like, if you did Ink Frog, you could just grab those listings and put them on your store. Now, people were... Because we, we don't... I mean, of course, my instincts is like, ah, it's garbage. Don't buy that stuff. You know, because, <laughs> Look at my store. Yeah. Jeez. So, because I'm just like... It's just like cheap Chinese junk. But other people who know about that kind of world... Yeah. Uh, they're like, the value of it is, is that if you can get their suppliers... Uh-huh. And you have all the skews. It's already done. And then, yeah. it, then you just buy the, the, quantity. the skews yeah, and you just keep filling like, up. You're like, grab a hundred more of those. The listing's already up. Yeah. And it just, it's like a little warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that's, a, just, that's a tough question. Is it worth it? I don't yeah. know. But you Do know, you want to sell cheap Chinese sunglasses? Right. So, it, so Yes it, or no? So it goes back to like what, how we started this whole podcast. Right. We are not our target audience. Right. You know, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's our taste versus buyer's taste and like when do you yeah just put your taste aside and be like i wouldn't buy this stuff but some people do so why not just sell cheap chinese sunglasses you know uh, i don't know um it's it's interesting some if it's interesting to you then it's worth it yeah if it's not interesting to you it's not worth it yeah or is it? I don't yeah. know. I mean, I think ultimately I think so. that's what a lot of people were talking about. What do you want to spend your time Can doing? you imagine having this in your life? Having, you know, this amount of storage put away to this and then every day people buying X amount of like little sunglasses and, you know, you got to pull them out, put them in the box, deal with them. We've done know. similar things like with, with military surplus where... You know, you'll buy a certain item and you just sell it like crazy. And you're like, man, I wish we had this all the time. Like those bunny boots. Yeah. I wish we had these bunny boots infinitely in my warehouse. But I didn't. And I couldn't get more. And that yeah. was the end of that. See, I So mean, you're just kind of like, eh. I mean, that's the thing. I think that's the, the, the Amazon drug, you know. Right. Because like the FBA. Like if you yeah. can find that, that item. That stop That you can buy inexpensively and right. unlimited. Yes. And you Put it up and it just sells like unlimited. And no one else ever gets on that it's catalog like page. Yeah. But I just think that's almost like hitting the jackpot because if it's that popular, then so everyone moves in. Catch on. If you can buy it wholesale, it means really anyone Anybody can buy can. it wholesale. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know. It's a, it, it's a really good question yeah. that we don't have an answer to. But that is interesting too, though. I mean, I, I think we've heard people talk about this, about can like... Why can't you buy an eBay store? Like, I mean, I guess eBay probably makes it illegal in the eBay world. But like, 
how couldn't does, you how know? does eBay know where as long as you have some kind of trust with that other person and you give them X amount of dollars and then they just like give you give the, you the sign in a info. username and password and then you right. just go in there and just change and all you of change it, the password and, and you yours. change the shipping I mean you should be able to eBay is I mean I don't, it would just be like someone moving yeah or like getting divorced you're like okay well my name was on it but now or like it's you know whatever. yeah. I mean, I, I think <laughs> I've never heard of them saying you couldn't do that. I think that the people have posted like eBay oh, a link because you're like buying their feedback. Yeah, because I think that's like oh. why what eBay is trying to stop is like you, you know bought, you bought their reputation. Somebody, I mean, like here's here's how the scam right works. right. So I am like a dubious person, right. And I'm like really sneaky. Yeah. So, you're I, sneaky. so I open up an eBay account and mm. I just sell things and I get good feedback. I don't know. You get like 500, 500 items, yeah. Good and then feedback. I go on the dark web and, and I sell, sell that this account. good thing. Yep. And then someone comes in with even worse intentions and, and just, just starts selling like until they thousand dollar handbags right. and they sell like 20 of them. And then they never deliver, and then they yep. walk away. Yep. So I guess that's the, the danger. That's the danger of being being able to sell an account. Yeah, but that's interesting. I, I still think people could do it and not be have bad intentions. Yeah. like sure yeah. those sunglasses sellers. I guess know. it's it's one of those things where maybe eBay doesn't want it to happen and would be angry if they caught you but if you just transfer your account and everything was okay and ebay well, wasn't okay. any the wiser then be, I don't yeah know. i'm not advocating that i'm just saying i'm not advocating that and i haven't done that so i don't know i don't know how that would work yeah okay let's go to the questions or comments that people sent in this week okay you can email us an audio file our email is the scavenger life at gmail.com or you can call our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. And you have three minutes to leave a message. Hello, fellow scavengers. Uh, my comments today are a bit off the normal topic, but uh, I thought I'd go ahead. All this talk of the virus and uh, the community of people who listen to this podcast got me to thinking about uh, end-of-life preparations. And I'm suggesting that uh, we scavengers make the ultimate reuse of parts by asking everyone to donate your organs when you meet your demise. In Illinois, uh, we need to sign the back of our driver's license and tell our significant others that we want to donate our organs. I don't know whether the process is the same for other states, but I hope you'll consider it. Our family recently lost a loved one to leukemia, and she required uh, weekly blood transfusions. So I donate blood on a regular basis, and I would ask you to do the same. You might even get paid for it, uh, for donating blood. And yes, you can still donate blood and blood platelets during the pandemic. So I hope you're all well, able to keep your businesses running, and I hope you'll consider donating. Thank you. See, I love that little PSA. Yeah. Um, I'm an organ donor on my driver's license. I think you do a little checkbox when you like renew your license. Yeah, and there's a real a movement to make it be by default your donor, and, and you, you have opt to out. Opt out, but it hasn't gotten there yet here yeah. here in the states. Uh, yes, about uh, doing your will and your end of life stuff. Yep. Uh, exactly. Actually, something we had done. I don't know, a year ago or something, because we were worried about, like, what happens if I die or you die, like, yeah, uh, you know, it does the other one inherit everything, so we actually wrote out wills, and, uh, yeah, I should reread those and be like, does this all make sense still? (laughs) Uh, It's actually not a bad idea, like, if you wrote one a few years ago, you should reread it and be like, does this still make sense? Um, yeah. We actually just did it online. Yeah. It was like writeyourownwill.com dot com right. or something, and I mean we had it notarized and right. witnessed and whatever. Right. But um, yeah, I think that is a very good thing for yeah. people. And to do. especially if you're older, I mean, especially if you're older and you have kids, like, and if you don't have like end of life or you know do not re- re- resuscitate, it, you should have all that stuff just so your kids don't have to make that choice. For and you. give them copies. You know? Give yeah. your kids copies of right. that stuff. Exactly. Um, so they have the documentation. Yeah. Yep. Good, good call. Thank you. Okay, that's it for this week. We hope everyone uh, is safe in this time of the pandemic. I do want to thank people for going to the tip jar. Oh, we yeah. didn't ask anyone to do that. That's, nice. that's very nice of you. Yep. Uh, I really appreciate it. 
I also again want to say thank you for anybody buying coffee from Broad Porch. Broad Porch dot coffee. Yep. So and you can go buy coffee. It's what it's what we drink. It's good stuff. Yep. Um, okay, and you can check out our blog at scavengerlife.com, and that's where we have our forum. Uh, we post this episode every Monday morning or Sunday night if if Ryan's quick about it. <laughs> Which I usually am. On Wednesdays, uh, we post the What Sold video that Steve Schultz is doing from the middle of the country. Yes, Steve. Uh, I saw this week was like a cat was involved, right? <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> the cat is involved <laughs> most of the time. Yeah. Uh, You can leave a question or comment on our voicemail line just to share with everybody. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Are you and Ashley still doing the shampoo and booze? Okay, we have not done shampoo and booze in about a month. Oh, wow. Because uh, Ashley is a frontline worker. She works at a grocery store. So she's been actually working a lot more hours than normal. And also, um, you know, Airbnbs are shut down right now, like almost everywhere in the entire world. So, uh, it's hard to have a podcast about that. Although you do have an Airbnb, now would be the time to, to like catch up on your uh, renovations and fix things up. Any maintenance is a good time to do it. Okay. We're ending this podcast in three. Two, one. Sell trash. Be safe.